Ryan Fleming can help you chart out a course for your retirement with his intimate knowledge of financial planning and the airline industry. It's time for the Pilot's Advisor. It's another edition of the Pilot's Advisor. Walter Schorholt here with Ryan Fleming, financial advisor at Retire Pilots, serving you worldwide, based out of St. Louis for the time being, but currently joining us from Japan. You can find us online at retirepilots.com. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about do you concur, Ryan? We're going to force you to maybe pick some sides in important financial debates from bonds. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Walter. You're going to ask me if I concur, and I was just going to say, absolutely not. I do not concur. You do not concur. You do not concur to even doing the episode. Well, then, I don't, this I don't was even the know shortest one about, we've done. So there you go, I folks. I do not concur. Do not concur. <laughs> he does not concur on any of these things, it sounds like. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what side of the debate you fall on. Uh, we're going to cover everything from bonds to life insurance, credit card debt, social security, lots of different topics, and see what side of the debate your advisor should fall on most likely. All right, so here's the first one, Ryan. Let's see uh, how many we get through here. Uh, you should always pay off your house as soon as you can. There's a camp out there that says that's always the way that it should be done. What do you think, or do you concur? I would actually say I do not concur, and I would say absolutely not if you want to build true wealth. Um, however, I think this is a subject that has changed over the years. I, I would view a mortgage as good debt, and when we have mortgage rates between 3 and 5%, that's still historic lows, and I think the opportunity cost of what you could do with your money is better used and leveraged elsewhere. I actually have a great article about this. So, so many times I've had this conversation with clients, and you know, a lot of it's about peace of mind. I mean, if you feel good and you feel like you can sleep better at night by having your house paid off, that's one thing. But if you're truly wanting to leverage your money and have and build true wealth. I actually have an article now that I share with a bunch of people after we have this conversation, and it's about home equity, and, and it, it, it shows the difference between paying off your house versus using those those assets and leveraging them over time, and I think it's fantastic. If you uh, have questions about this debate, reach out to me, and I'll email it to you. I'll airdrop to you. I'll text it to you. Great article. All right, very good. Again, that number to text Ryan is 843-475-3038 if you want an easy way to get in touch and request that, 843-475-3038. Yeah, it's an interesting debate that definitely has maybe you know shifted back and forth over the years where you might fall on that debate. Good one to be aware of that it, you know not all of these things are set in stone uh, forever, and these things change over time. All right, here's another one. Bonds have been in the news a lot lately. Uh, individual bonds are better than bond funds. Are you uh, concurring with that part of the debate? Much like the market, bonds are just going having a rough go, man. God, talk about you know bonds just having issues and then interest rates are increasing. You know, bond prices are going down. It's rough. Anyway, uh, I'm all about diversification. No different than stocks. I think if you're going to own bonds, not only do you need to have short-term bonds because those are going to give you a negative correlation to stocks, i.e. if stocks are down, those bonds will be up. Any intermediate or long-term bonds are not going to help you out or they're going to give you a little bit more of a uh, actually giving you less return but not having a, a negative correlation. But no, I'm all about bond funds being more diversified than just picking individual bonds. Great points there, Ryan. So we've got uh, so far covered the house and bonds. Uh, let's talk about insurance in the next category. Do you concur that nobody needs life insurance once they've retired? I do not concur. And I think that there's many different uses for life insurance. Life insurance is one of the uh, easiest and best ways to leverage your money and leverage your resources, even if you already have a retirement income plan that's squared away. And I actually have an individual on staff that specializes in under uncovering uh, risks and other issues that you might have or securing your pension in retirement that can open your eyes to a little bit of, of uh, some of the different options that insurance can uh, truly give you, um, even tax-free income. So if you don't have insurance or you don't know about insurance, you might want to reach out and we can open your eyes to some of the, the different tools that insurance can be used for. That's another great point, Ryan. Again, if you want to get more information from Ryan and uh, touch base on some of these different topics, you can go to retirepilots.com, retirepilots.com. Great info on the website for you to check out. We'll link to that in the description of today's show, as always. Look for the Retirement Toolkit while you're there, by the way. You can get a great starting toolkit on all the things that you need to know to begin your retirement and financial planning journey. 
We're covering some important financial debates on the show today, asking Ryan if he concurs. How about this one, Ryan? It's better to have a fee-based advisor instead of a commission-based broker. I think the whole industry is going this way, um, but not all um, clients out there truly understand what's going on. A, a fee-based advisor is an advisor that's going to be on the same side of the table as you. They're they're highly motivated to help you make more money because then they get paid more. And also, they're going to be a fiduciary. They're going to be somebody that most likely is legally obligated to act in your best interest. A commission-based broker is the old school model in this business where you have a stock broker that's going to pick individual stocks for you. Uh, these are the individuals that over time have gotten in trouble because of churning your account so they can get paid or trying to sell you a certain product that you may or may not need. They don't have to necessarily make sure that it is uh, in your best interest, but it could possibly be suitable uh, for you. So I think if you're looking out there, you might want to research the difference between a fee-based advisor or somebody that works on commissions. When I think about commissions, I immediately think about annuities, which are not really a good thing for 95 plus percent of the population. And we can discuss that at some point in time. One other point, Walter, and I apologize for reaching back, but when you talked about life insurance once you're retired, for our pilots out there, especially those that have a pension, i.e. FedEx pilots, UPS pilots, Life insurance is something you really want to look at, and hopefully before you're 60, to replace that pension. If you're thinking about doing a survivor benefit with your pension at FedEx or UPS, you might want to reach out to me and let me show you a cheaper, better, tax-free way to secure that pension for your spouse if something happens to you. That's a great point. And again, you can reach out by calling or texting Ryan at 843-475-3038, 843-475-3038. 3038 call or text him. Great uh, great difference to understand there, those different ways that advisors are paid and compensated for their work. And uh, there are some pretty tremendous differences out there, so it's good to know those. Uh, how about this one? You mentioned uh, annuities a little bit earlier, uh, maybe being a topic that pops up. So let's just go straight to it. Uh, annuities are a ripoff. Do you concur with that sentiment? Uh, without getting into all the details, I will say I concur. I think annuities are a ripoff. If you do any research on them, you could probably figure most of this out. However, I think there's a lot of smoking mirrors with annuities that and many things are riders that they give or offer clients to. Most clients don't really understand what they've been sold or purchased. And in most cases, when somebody ends up buying an annuity, they have been sold that annuity or that product. And and I see it in this, that industry uh Many, many clients getting hurt and not understanding what happened. So we can have a whole show about this, but from my perspective, annuities are a ripoff. Hey, if you're ready to have clarity and thrive in your retirement, you're in the right place. And I've got another resource for you to check out. Go to retirepilots.com and look right there on the homepage. You'll be able to click Get My Free Toolkit. What this is going to do is help you get for free Ryan's Retirement Toolkit. This is going to include his two books, The Pilot's Advisor and Pilot's Retire Early, revealing the nine critical decisions when retiring and the seven lessons to save your retirement. Not only does it include the books, but lots of other goodies packed into this free toolkit that'll be sent to you ASAP. It's a great starting place for any pilot to begin their retirement journey. Go to retirepilots.com. Here's another one. You'll be in a lower tax bracket in retirement. I think a lot of us have heard that over the years. So it's best to defer taxes now and pay them later. Do you concur? I don't necessarily concur. I think this is a case-by-case basis, but I think the old adage was that your tax bracket would would be less in retirement. And I just don't think that's the way the future is going to be um, for, for a multitude of reasons. This is something you want to reach out to us and we can discuss in detail with your situation. Also, working with the CPA. We work with Pilot Tax out of Indy. They're fantastic on us. Uh, Being able to look at your situation and come up with a strategic tax plan and a tax strategy, because it's not all about reducing your tax exposure this year, but getting you to a better place when you're retiring from the airline and, and going into retirement. And we want you to have options in retirement because the reality is with what's going on in our world today, I think taxes can only go up and we can, uh, debate that. There's some great books out there. Uh, We like to help our pilots work towards the 0% tax bracket, and we can help you with that. Reach out. 
Always great to have options, no doubt about it. Retirepilots.com, the place to go if you want to reach out. That's retirepilots.com as well. All right, here's another one, Ryan. Uh, we'll go to the credit card world. You should never use credit cards. They're just they're just bad. Stay away from them. I do not concur with this. I think credit card debt is not a good thing. I think it's a horrible thing. But I think you should be able to use credit cards all the time to build um, your credit and work on having a good uh, credit score. So I, I look at credit cards as a tool to be able to get financing or leverage money later on. Um, but credit card debt is 100% absolutely a bad thing. All right, good to know there. All right, I got two more for you, Ryan. Uh, let's talk mutual funds and ETFs. It's better to buy mutual funds or ETFs instead of individual stocks. I 100% concur. It's all about diversification. It's not about stock picking or market timing. That one was uh, nice and easy for you. All right. And then last but not least, you should start your Social Security as early as possible to ensure that you get your money out of the system. Wow. What a complicated, loaded question that is. <laughs> thought that'd I'm be a good go one with, to finish up with, you know? I'm just going to go with, it depends. Um, That's it? You're going to just leave us with it, that? It depends. It depends? All right. Well, the, the sad part about Social Security is, you know, it's very underfunded. Uh, there's definitely going to have to be some changes in Social Security. Unfortunately, you're never going to get, you know, with pilots, you're never going to get what you put into it. And I think that when we look at an income replacement ratio, not only does it not do that for us, and but it's going to get worse. I don't think Social Security is going to go away, but I think our income replacement ratio is going to continue to drop. And depending on your situation, uh, it's definitely a conversation to have with Social Security and when you when you should actually take it. All right. Great answers across the board. Ryan, thanks for sharing your opinion on all these different things as we look at these different debates in the financial world. So if you have questions about these elements or something else on your mind, you're wondering how you can improve your financial situation or get ready for retirement, or if you're viewing things through the proper lens, these are the kinds of conversations that Ryan has every day in the office with folks, putting the context of the financial world into your particular situation. You can call or text Ryan at 843-475-3038. That's 843-475-3038. Or go online to retirepilots.com and uh, find out more ways that you can get in touch and more information there on the site for you to learn about and check out. That's retirepilots.com. And again, we always link to that in the description of today's show. Uh, Ryan, thanks for the help and the guidance on the program today. Great chatting with you again, and we'll do it again soon. Sounds good, Walter. You take care of yourself. It's always good talking to you. Information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, investment, or legal advice. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.